June's first storm formed in the Atlantic in the Gulf of Mexico and moved towards the northeast as Tropical Storm Andrea, with a top wind speed of 65 miles per hour, which it attained just before landfall, and a minimal air pressure of 992 millibars. The storm caused four fatalities and damages of $40,000. Our next storm, Yagi, formed in the Western Pacific in the Philippine Sea and moved generally towards the northeast throughout its lifetime, stalling south of Japan before dissipating on June the 12th. It reached a peak wind speed of 50 miles per hour and an air pressure of 990 millibars without causing any fatalities or damages. On June 17th, a tropical depression formed just before crossing the Yucatan Peninsula and entered the Gulf of Mexico, becoming Tropical Storm Barry eventually before making landfall in Vera Cruz. Reaching a peak wind speed of 65 miles per hour and a minimal air pressure of 1,003 millibars, Barry caused five fatalities, though no known damages. Back to the Western Pacific and we have Tropical Storm Leapy, a weak storm that formed on June the 17th east of the Philippines and headed northwards, passing just by Miyako Island in the Japanese southern Ryukyu Islands before moving towards the north and dissipating south of Jeju Island, South Korea. The storm caused no fatalities or damages. On the other side of the Philippines, Tropical Storm Bibinka formed in the South China Sea on June the 20th and headed towards the northwest, curving towards the west, eventually crossing Hainan Island as a tropical storm, a weak one at that. It caused no fatalities, at least none known, but $5.3 million of damages resulted from the storm. On June 23rd, it was the Eastern Pacific's turn to spawn a storm, this time in the form of Cosme, which eventually peaked as a Category 1 hurricane with winds of 85 miles per hour and a central pressure of 980 millibars. Even though it did not make a landfall or even pass very close to any land areas, it did cause three fatalities and minimal damages along the coast. On June 28th, a tropical depression formed in the Philippine Sea and crossed over the Philippines uh, near the end of June as Tropical Storm Rumbia, moving into the South China Sea and developing into a typhoon as it passed Hainan Island. The storm eventually made landfall in mainland China in early July and eventually dissipated. It caused 55 fatalities and $178 million in damages. Back in the eastern Pacific on the last day of June, Tropical Storm Delilah formed and passed not too far from the Mexican coast as a tropical storm, intensifying into a hurricane as it began to draw away. Uh, Delilah eventually dissipated on July the 7th, but the storm didn't cause any fatalities and only small amounts of damage. This was followed by the formation of Tropical Storm Eric, which passed fairly close to the Mexican coastline as it moved towards the northwest, eventually dissipating on July the 9th near the Baja California Peninsula. Eric peaked as an 80 mile per hour storm with an air pressure of 983 millibars, causing two fatalities and moderate damages. And then came the Northern Hemisphere's first major storm of the year, Typhoon Sulik, which reached a wind speed of 145 miles per hour out to sea and was still a strong Category 1 storm by the time it made landfall in Taiwan and maintained that intensity as it hit China as well. It dissipated on July the 13th over China and caused 9 fatalities and $457 million in damages. On July the 8th, the third named storm in the Atlantic formed, this time Tropical Storm Chantal, and passed just north of Barbados before crossing through the Lesser Antilles dissipating on July the 10th just south of Haiti. The storm caused one fatality and $10 million in damages as it peaked as a 65 mile per hour storm. In mid-July a tropical depression formed just east of Luzon in the Philippines and crossed the northeastern extremity of the island before becoming tropical storm Cimarron which it made landfall on July the 18th in China just as it was dissipating. It was a weak storm generally, though it did cause two fatalities and $253 million in damages. Tropical Storm Dorian formed in the latter stages of the month and developed into a tropical storm with winds of 60 miles per hour before degenerating into a remnant low over the central Atlantic and regenerating briefly near Florida as a tropical depression. The storm didn't cause any ill effects on land. Our next storm, Flossie, traversed the eastern and central part of the Pacific and peaks just shy of hurricane status with winds of 70 miles per hour and an air pressure of 994 millibars. The storm dissipated just after crossing the northernmost Hawaiian Islands um, as a tropical depression. The st storm caused $24,000 in damages. Following in its footsteps was Tropical Storm Gill, which formed on July the 30th and developed into a hurricane, peaking with winds of 85 miles per hour in the eastern Pacific and a minimal central pressure of 985 millibars. Throughout its life, the storm remained out to sea and did not cause any effects on land. July's last storm formed in the South China Sea and developed into Tropical Storm JB as it moved towards the northwest, striking Hainan and then mainland China near the Vietnamese border. The storm caused six fatalities and damages of $476,000.